Hello everyone, I'm Zach Yeldo. I'm Chris Harrison. Uh, we are going to be going over our sentiment analysis on cryptocurrency. So, um, so we thought it would be an interesting project to see how much sentiment actually affects cryptocurrency values. So what we did was um, pull a bunch of tweets for a live sentiment analysis of cryptocurrency. So what we're going to show you here in this project is us comparing these tweets and their sentiment values to their cryptocurrency values. So um, first, what we're going to do is select the cryptocurrency that we want to analyze. And just because it's the most popular, let's do Bitcoin. And once we have that chosen, um, you can see this block of code right here is going to assign the acronym for Bitcoin to everything else that has the crypto variable. So let's run this and run all of our imports. Next, what we need to do is enter all the values that we need to connect to the Twitter API so that we can actually stream all the tweets. So I actually, all you need to do to get these values is just create an account and then um, register for the tokens. So it's nothing too hard. But once you have that, um, once we had that, we actually went on to the next part, which was building the coin information, which Chris is going to talk about a little bit more. So go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So what we used was the Crypto Compare API. And you were only able to use uh, one symbol at a time. So we wanted to avoid having to create a list uh, handwritten. So we wanted to be able to iterate through uh, the list of the top cryptocurrencies. Uh, so what we did here was we built, we grabbed all the symbols, and then we were able to rank them by volume, and then just grab whatever symbol uh, with a variable that we chose. So in our, our piece of code, we chose the top 10. And then uh, here at the bottom, we wanted to uh, round up, and we'll use that for the join, uh, which Zach will talk about a little bit later, to join in some of the sentiment data. Let's run that part really quick. Okay. And then the next part was just building the uh, price. So we actually took that list, and we went in and grabbed the historical prices. Um, yeah, so we grabbed the prices by minute. And so after we got all these these um, values, we run a refresh function, which is actually all the way at the bottom right here. So we run that, and that will actually refresh all of our crypto values later on. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. So um, the next thing we do is the next thing we did was actually plot the sentiment. Um, and so how this works is we use matplotlib for it and we have everything being pulled from the sentiment data CSV, which we created, or we will be creating in the next block of code, but we already have it created just for this presentation. Um, we split the data based on commas and then created a for loop to iterate through and graph the data based on the amount of positives and negatives. So um, I'll run that in a second. But so first here, here is the actual Twitter stream code. And so these are all of the columns that we're pulling from or the data points that we're pulling from Twitter. And then I actually included an extra column that will identify whether the tweets were positive, negative, or neutral based on the sentiment value. And the sentiment value is right here. And we actually used a package for this that, that analyzed the tweets. It analyzes a bunch of different things. We used it for t tweets specifically. And then it gave us, it spit out a sentiment value, which is what we based our positive and negative uh, determinations on. So here is where we actually connect it to the API. And let us run it right now. So you can see that it's actually refreshing the plot on the left. Um, 
and it's going live. So we're gonna wait about five minutes and then come back to you guys. So we're back and here's where we are at right now. Um, and also one thing I forgot to mention earlier was that in our actual analysis for the plotting, we have positive values affecting the line graph with only 0.25 while negative values are affecting it by one, which is because the po there's a positive skew. So I had to adjust the values so that it would look, it would be more accurate. Um, so now we have some data plotted for the sentiment and we're going to compare this against the actual Bitcoin cryptocurrency values. So let's run, actually let's look at this code first. So what I did was create a data frame from that sentiment CSV and then I grouped that um, data frame by the created date, which is actually the um, time that it was created. And after we grouped that, I summed the sentiment values by date so that I was able to join it and plot it more effectively. So that's actually going to be a difference that you noticed in the line graph is that these are sum values while that one is just being classified to positive or negative. Um, and then I took the data frame from over here that Chris created or Chris discussed and and I set the index of that one's time so that I was able to join into crypto sentiment join that min data frame with the sentiment data frame on time and this was actually an inner join um, so once that was done we plotted the data into the graph and this was actually much more difficult than it looks because so what I was trying to do was plot them without setting the index as a timestamp because um, I know and it was giving me two separate graphs so once I set the index to timestamp they gained a common x-axis and they then I was able to plot the two two separate uh, y's so let me run that for you guys right now And here's how it looks. So it actually looks like there is an inverse relation. Um, this is gonna this is gonna vary whenever you run it, honestly, because I ran it a few times and sometimes it was positive and sometimes it was negative. So I don't know if live sentiment would be the best indicator of cryptocurrency values. And that is, that's just one of the assumptions we made, but maybe with more runtime, we would be able to make a more detailed observation. Um, but after five minutes, this is what it looks like. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Thank you for your time. Thank you.